brilliant, beautiful astrology soulmates, and welcome to your weekly horoscope for the week of July 20th. And let me just tell you this week, as we're jumping in, we were doing an eat and greet this last Friday with Linda Berry, and that ended up kind of falling out. So we're going to do part two this Wednesday and cover the signs in vibrational astrology, Libra through Pisces this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So hopefully you can show up and I'll have all of that in the community tab and in the description box. And of course, if you follow on any of the social medias, it will be there as well. We will also have Adam Gainsbourg happening this week and Bear River will be here and Chris Brennan is coming next week. So the eat and greets are still moving and grooving and shucking and jiving along and I hope to have you in them. But let's talk about what's happening this week week. It's a new moon week, which is always exciting. And typically and traditionally, when there is new moon energy or new moon vibe on the table, one of the things I'm telling you is to plant your seeds of intention to begin something new. And that is not what I'm going to be telling you to do this week. Now, this week is actually interesting because we've actually had two energies of Cancerian moon energy. So we had one in June and now we're traveling here through July and we're still in the energy of cancer. What is that about? How is that happening and what does that mean? Well, one of the things I want to point out is when we had this energy in June in this Cancerian energy, it was first of all an eclipse. So we want to pay attention to the impact that that makes. And it was also at zero degrees. That means boom. We are really trying to leave the Cancer Capricorn axes, but something needed to be addressed at that time. But that particular eclipse was also quincunx, Saturn. So it was essentially this lunar, or the, excuse me, this eclipse saying, I'm trying to begin something here. And Saturn saying, I understand that you are, but I can't understand exactly what you're trying to do here. I'm confused. I need more information. We need to adjust. Go get me more information and then I can help you get on with it. Now we arrive at the new moon that's happening here on the 20th at 28 degrees of Cancer. And this one is still interacting with Saturn, but this is in an opposition. Now an opposition tends to be relational. So we've got this new moon that's over here saying, okay, I'm trying again. Let's please start this. And it's going to be in the Cancerian areas of your chart, home, family, emotions, emotional security, what makes you feel at home and safe and nourished, right? But instead of being confused, this time Saturn is saying, oh, okay, you've just got this energy that's kind of in the way over here, but I'll help you if you'll work with me, find the people, places, and things you need to help you get that done. So while it is the new moon, I'm not going to tell you to plant your seeds of intention for something brand new here. Instead, I'm going to tell you to plant your seeds of intention to allow the right people, places, things, change of hearts, change of perspectives, whatever you need, come to you so that you can wrap up what this eclipse was trying to get you moving forward to, trying to get you to clear out space so that you can move forward. So it's a really beautiful offering of this moon, I think, that sent us back into our lives, into our hearts, into our families even, to clean up some things that were there so that we can move them forward. Now, you guys got to see last week my very own personal life example where I had my grandmother pass away a year and a half ago, which is brilliant because these energies, these moon cycles that we're tying to at the new moon on the 20th are tying to a year and a half cycle. So of course it's not brilliant that she passed away. That was just her time, but she passed away a year and a half ago. Her properties were not taken care of for a year and a half. And I stepped back in, in order to get that done. And what happened at that eclipse, you guys, is that it was time to get back and take care of those things. And there was holdups just left and right. There was no, there was, I couldn't see how to get it done. What's the rest of the information that Saturn was like, I see you, but we can't, we don't have, we need more information. And as we have approached this new moon, I was able to go back, have the people, places, things, and resources in place just days before this to go make that happen. It is incredible when you watch the timing of this. And if you want to look into the bigger timing of what this moon is about for you, look back. 
19 years ago, what was happening and shifting for you, especially in your emotional life or in your home or what made you feel secure life. And you can see where this is trying to usher in some change as a culmination to that cycle. So really pay attention to that. A lot of things that are on the table as we look to this moon are going to be things that have to do with women, women's issues or feminine issues issues but these things would likely be about cleaning up in those relationships in some way shape or form so not necessarily the moon where i'm telling you to plant your seeds of intention for everything new i think this is forward permission to clean up but also have the resources that you need to maybe be able to do that which doesn't mean that it doesn't come without some push and pull there's still work here this is still an eclipse energy so i think you'll still be tested there'll still be some obstacles here and there is compromise that definitely needs to happen happen, especially when you've got a big blast of moon energy opposing Saturn. That means you're maybe running up against something that is a bigger authority or even a bigger idea that you've had that has kept the forward motion going from going forward and can feel a little bit more pessimistic, okay? Now, we also get a little bit of help in this as well because if nothing else, um, a cancer moon is good at being nice and patient. So breathe that in, bring it, breathe in some patience. Then when we get to the 21st of this week, we're going to see transiting Mercury, who's also over in the energy of cancer still at this point, coming into square with Chiron, who's over in Aries and retrograde. So truly, we're able to take some patient, some grounded, some nourishing um, perspectives on old hurts, especially about things of the identity. And again, that Chiron retrograde in the energy of Aries is really asking you, do you accept who and where you are right now? Do you accept your role that you need to be playing at this particular time in your life? What decisions can you make based on accepting that identity? Where do you need to go back and accept that the things that you did then, the relationships you had at that time, you did the best that you could at that time for who you were at that time. And now we have to make some decisions to heal that, to release that, to nourish ourselves and ground down into our own security different, right? You couldn't have spent any more time with that family member. You couldn't have spent any more time at that property. Whatever it is, I think that this Mercury and Chiron can bring a conversation to the table that is a little bit uncomfortable because it's getting into the wound, but it's also showing you a much more nurturing perspective on yourself um, as you're able to look at that. Now, that takes some courage also, though, to see yourself differently. So I love that as we roll into the 22nd, we see the sun packing up, moving out of that energy of cancer, and it's going to move into the energy of Leo and it becomes Leo season. It is time to focus on courage. It's time to focus on some self-expression. It's time to focus on new beginnings. It's, it's time to throw those shoulders back, lift your head up high and walk forward. Walk forward confidently as the version of you as of yourself that you are today and also of where you are in your life here today. I also love that the sun moves into the energy of Leo and we get a blast of joy right? We get a blast of play. We get a blast of being leaders in our own lives. It's a fire energy. Burn big, burn bright, burn hot, and be courageous in all that you're doing. Now, also on that same day, Mercury is going to come into a sextile with Uranus. And when the planets have sex, that's good for us. This leads us to new ideas, new innovations. This leads us to a place where maybe even it's, it's not a whole new thing, but it's an innovative way to look at something or to come at something. It changes maybe some of the grounding and foundational ideas that we've had about our things, including our material resources, and we're able to come at them from a bit of a different perspective. And I love that we've just had that square with Chiron, and now we've got this inventive energy of um, Uranus on the table. So truly, it's your opening to do the most brilliant brilliant, genius, innovative thing that you could do, which I think is to forgive yourself, celebrate yourself, give other people some grace and forgiveness, and to move forward, innovated yourself. Move forward with new ideas that don't have to be fixed and grounded in old truths that don't apply to your life anymore today. So really, 
as I look across this week, I see it as a really nice week for freedom. Now we're also going to, at the end of the week on the 25th, Mars moves into its pre retrograde sh shadow phase. <laughs> if I could get that out of my mouth today. So it's a pre retrograde shadow phase that we'll move into where where we're going to see Mars happening is going to be at 15 degrees of Aries. So start to take a little bit of note right now at 15 degrees of Aries, what's happening for you? What's going on in what you desire? What are your actions looking like right now? And remember that Mars is beginning to slow down here. So as he slows down, take a look around at your world, your desires, start to ask yourself the question of what am I putting my energy into or where do I need help seeing where to put my energy into? Because as we get into the actual retrograde that's going to happen September to November, you'll get to get some answers to those questions. So start writing them down. Compile your questions. What do you really want? What do you really desire? What are you really doing in the world? If you didn't get the opportunity to watch the interview that was done today, the eat and greet with Adam Gangensberg about how to understand your Venus and your Mars in relation to your sun in the chart and how to really actualize that, check that out. That is great going into a Mars retrograde to see if you're in alignment with what you need to be doing and what's the best flow for your life at this particular time. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm so grateful to be back home and in my normal surroundings and with you guys this week. I look forward to bringing you content that is worth your time and hopefully helps you get something done, answer some questions, send some confirmation your way, whatever it is that you're looking for. So like this and I will see you next week, okay? Bye, everyone.